Just yes, yeah, she wants to talk, but she, she's gonna get her chance. Believe me. Right now, my job is to introduce the lady that's sitting there with her. I've been knowing her for an awful long time too. She was the voice of WUFT in Gainesville. A lot of you listen to that station, and, and she's done an awful lot for folk music here in the state of Florida herself. She's just retired from WUFT and is traveling around the state helping to promote. And, and helping to record and, and helping to document and helping to put on events just like this. And we couldn't do it without folks like her. How about a big hand for Donna Green Towns? Thank you so much. Thank you. I tell you what, this is a very, very special evening. I am so honored to get to be the person to interview. Margaret Longhill for this 27th annual Will McLean Music Festival. 27 years, amazing. And it, it almost just goes without saying, I'm sure that you all really get it, that she is the person who had the passion and the vision to start this festival so many years ago. Let's give her another hand, Dr. Margaret Longhill. Donna did not let me know ahead of time what she was going to say, so uh, just be careful, okay? <laughs> she is so humble. She wanted to sit on the front row and just enjoy it, and I was like, no, not tonight. Not tonight, Margaret. So let me tell you a little bit about how we're going to do this presentation tonight. We're going to be exploring the history of the Will McLean Music Festival, find out what inspired her to help keep Will McLean's songs alive. Because as you all have heard many times, Will McLean wanted to save Florida through his music. And Margaret understood that many years ago. And so we're going to be talking to her and then also hearing some very special music performances interspersed with this presentation. And so we ought to just get started. Okay, Margaret, if you would, um, tell us when you first met Will McClay. How, you know, it's been a long time, but can you recall a little bit about that night or that day? Uh, yes, uh, I was living next door to this, this friend of mine and I were visiting in my house, which was next door to this um, um, newspaper writer. And unknown to us, Will, Will was being interviewed by that writer next door to us. And the first thing, that, that was in the days when you laid out in the sun and the, my friend and I were laying out in my backyard, which had a pretty good sized fence. Well, the first thing we knew, there were these two heads looking <laughs> over the fence. That's how I met Will. Now you obviously heard him sing a little bit that day too, I think I heard you say. He sang some songs, and but somewhere along the line you went, this guy's got something important to say, is my impression. That what? That Will had some kind of important message that you felt strongly about that you wanted more people to continue hearing that music, right? And uh, like one of the young uh, musicians said, you know, I didn't know that that people wrote songs about the earth. That I thought they were just all about people that were in love. In love. Uh, so I said, oh yeah, you know, people, these songs are about the earth and about the sky and about all of nature. And it was a brand new thing for this young person. So that's kind of how things got started. And you know, you all know how wonderful this music is that celebrates our, our Wonderful first. And keeping along those lines, some of the songs that Will wrote about were about critters like 
turtles, um, like Conk Island, many of you heard that song. Uh, he wrote about uh, a deadly chase for a panther in Tate's Hell, right? Those are just really different kinds of songs. Yeah. Um, well, for those who have never been to the festival before, because we're so thrilled with the publicity we got this year from the many uh, news media outlets. But if you're here for the first time, just know Will McLean was born in Chipley, Florida in 1919. He died in 1990, and we had the most beautiful memorial service for him, and then dispersed his ashes into the Ocklawaha River. And then Margaret, spearheaded this effort to get Will McLean into the Florida Artist Hall of Fame. I think he was the first Florida uh, folk artist, right, Margaret? Mm -hmm. That's right. Will McLean was the first Florida folk artist to be inducted into the Florida Artist Hall of Fame. Yeah. Thanks to this lady right here that happened. It's incredible. And so, before we hear one of the musical performances, we need to, to talk a little bit about the passion you had for having a song contest with this festival. Why was that so important to have a song contest in the festival? Well, um, a, a contest it helps to encourage people because there's a prize. And when you have a contest, you've got prizes. So uh, we had this song contest and it it, uh, a lot of the musicians that are here wrote beautiful Florida songs, and some of them won the contest, some of them didn't, but I think the songs are all wonderful. And now we've had, since 1992, we've had hundreds of Florida songs. Will would be so proud to know how many songs have been inspired um, by his dream to save Florida through music. And the first song contest winner is coming up on the stage now and joined by his lovely wife this is ken schemes and lee and he not only won first place but he won second and tied for third and will many people know that will he had a lot of great musical buddies paul champion jim Ballou, gamble rogers and of course, they, they, it was said that they weaved their magical, that magical music together. And so the song that Ken wrote kind of echoes that whole thing. It's called, it's called The Empty Chair. Are we ready? Let's hear it, Empty Chair. Rolling down a Florida back road, I was feeling kind of dry. Saw this little twilight town, pasted on a purple sky. So I stopped in at their tavern, found myself a stool, watched a quiet game of checkers, some good old boys playing pool. All the local crowd assembled and three strange figures happened in. I knew they knew each other, for they had an annoying grin. They pulled four chairs into a circle, sat down, feet upon their rungs, seemed to speak a special lingo, as if they spoke in tongues. Seems the one against the wall was that banjo picking Paul. And next to him was that sweet picking chill. And the third picker there in his black hat with no bill. There beside that empty chair was a man they just called Will. They were singing and sweet, they were picking it tight. They were tapping their feet, they were playing so right. They're slamming, bamming, jamming down at the tavern tonight. Well, a hush fell on the tavern when he walked in through the door. Everybody knew him, he played there many times before. The three strangers. 
preachers knew him too, were not surprised to see him there. They all stood and shook his hand and nodded to the empty chair. He uncased a much played Martin, stroked his fingers aside his nose, and with that he oiled the strings, struck that old familiar pose. Then the music then forthcoming was the sweetest in the land. These four noble sons of Florida kicking and up the sand. Seems the one against the wall was that banjo pick and ball. Man next to him was that sweet picking and chill. Next to Will to make the four kicking up the beat. That old Florida troubadour, the circle was complete. Well, they're singing as sweet as they were picking it tight. They were tapping their feet, they were playing so right. They're slam bam and jamming down at the tavern. Such a sweet homecoming They all knew he had to ramble They were drinking in the music All so glad to see old Campbell Banjo, guitars, harps, and singing Oh, such a welcome sight Ocloa County's favorite son Is playing home tonight well, They were singing as sweet They were picking they were tapping their feet, they were playing so right. They're slam bam and jamming down at the tavern. Tonight. Oh, I had to move along, and as I left them playing there, I could still hear their songs floating on the midnight air. So now whenever there's a jam, no matter when or where, for whoever might drop in, always have an empty chair. So now whenever there's a jam, no matter when or where, for whoever might drop in, always have an empty chair. Your song. Beautiful. When you hear that song, Margaret, I'm sure it brings back a lot of memories because you knew a lot of those musicians, didn't you? Right. I love it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Margaret, you've been said it's been said that, and I've heard you say it, that when Will performed, you could look out at the audience and you could just feel the love poured out. What do you mean by that? What did, what did you see? Um, Will's songs uh, were so moving to people that it caused, uh, I think you all understand that, that it caused a reaction in them of, of love poured out. And you ended up being a little bit better after you heard those songs than you were before you heard them. <laughs> You mentioned a little bit earlier that he wrote. He liked to write about critters because he liked to he liked to camp in the swamp and in the woods, right? I think you had an experience camping. He taught you how to camp, I think, right? Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, darn! I was going to try to get more out of that one. <laughs> uh, I had the chance to meet Will at Gore's Landing and. He told me that all he needed was a fishing hook and a bag of taters, and you know, he, he could just get along fine, just be able to catch a fish, right? And have some taters to fry up at Gore's Landing and just love to live in the woods. But he also liked to write about people. 
not just the critters, because he's got some interesting songs about uh, people that you wouldn't ordinarily hear songs about, like, uh, got somebody to sing them. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, many of you all can hear these songs on, on the CDs that we have at the Will McLean uh, tent, so I hope that you'll pick up some of these, but Kush Holston and Scotty the Drummer, Osceola, that was a nice little sales pitch. <laughs> but we want to keep the Will McLean Festival continuing to go and keeping the foundation strong. And if you've never heard those songs, those are available at the Friends of Florida Folk Booth or at the foundation, right? Uh, we were saying that, that he liked to camp. And... Um, he also liked to be by the swamps and wrote some interesting songs about wild hogs and a lot of river songs. He wrote about the Ocklawaha River. And the one of the other winners of a song contest that we're gonna have come up and do a song, won the song contest three times. Three times, and Margaret said, okay, that's it. You can't win it more than three times. <laughs> Why don't tell them who it is, all right? <laughs> Mike Jurgensen. He's going to be coming up with, with Pete Price and uh, Pete Hennings and, and do the song that won for him the first time. It was a song called Music Drifts Along This River. Beautiful song. I think he recorded it first with the group Myriad, which many of you all may be familiar with the group Myriad. I always hated it that they broke up until he got with 2 p.m. and now I'm happy again. I've been blessed <laughs> in your <laughs> happy my too. musical career. So uh, we're going to hear that song tonight and then we'll have some more, another couple of presentations as well coming up in just a little bit. So some people get a little confused when they hear 2 p.m. because they get it mixed up with performance times, but actually it means we got two P's and a mic, so it's 2 p.m. Now you get it, right? <laughs> so let's make 2 p.m., especially Mike Jorgensen, welcome with his song that won the contest, Music Drifts Along This River. It's, it's such an honor to be part of this tribute to, to you, Margaret. We just love you so much. This 
one he tells our stories And then tells us stories to you We are all its tributaries When they know songs and you Music drifts along this river I think that's one of the most beautiful songs, really, ever written. And then he went on to write more that one. Right. right. Thank you. That was beautiful. Yeah. Uh, Margaret had the opportunity to be with Will at a unique location. Was it in Tampa where Pete Seeger was performing? We went to a Pete Seeger con a concert. Yeah. You want me to yeah. tell us more about that? That's so interesting. Okay. Uh, Will and I went to this Pete Seeger uh, concert in Tampa and during the show uh, Pete said, ladies and gentlemen, America's greatest living songwriter is in the audience. Will McLean stand up. <laughs> So, Will didn't want to stand up, but he did, okay. <laughs> and we've heard, and I think we have it printed on one of the uh, banners somewhere, that Seeger said that uh, Will's songs are going to be sung as long as there is a Florida, right? Right, yeah. One of the favorite things that we have on the willmcclain.com uh, that you can find is a, there's a tab that you can click that talks about Pete Seeger's relationship with Will and it was so exciting somebody found the video where Pete Seeger was on the Johnny Cash show, show like in the 1960s and he was doing Osceola's last words on the Johnny Cash show so if you get a chance to check that out McLean song yeah that was a Will McLean song yeah he was letting a national audience hear that song which I thought was really special Will never really wanted to make a lot of money either, did he? He had a chance to. He didn't care about it, did he? No, he didn't. <laughs> <laughs> he, he could have been famous, but he didn't care about that really, did he? Nope. <laughs> he, I remember him telling me in an interview, he goes, I don't worship at that shrine of gold. I thought that was really neat that when he said that. He said, and he, he said people have told him, you could have been a millionaire a million times over. He says, I am a millionaire. I'm rich in the beauty of Florida. That's what he said. Uh, he did. That's the way he felt, you know. Uh, one of the things that you have become such a champion for, and I hope you'll talk to us about that, is in this festival in particular, you can really tell, is the young, the young performers. Tell us why you care so much about that. I love to talk about that. Uh, we uh, encourage, but we already have the most amazing group of young of folk music performers that are right here at this festival. I was over there today uh, and, and caught the end of one of their shows. The talent was just thrilling. So uh, do all, let's do all we can to encourage these young people to think about Florida, to appreciate the, uh, the nature, and to keep writing songs and spreading the word to other people. So please help us do that, okay? And part of the reason I'm so proud and happy to be up here with you is that I have a, my own personal story about how you have been such an encouragement to my children. Um, 
my daughter Jessie, who's going to be coming up here in just a couple of minutes with her brother Lee and bass player David McBrady. Jessie was 14 months old when we were at the Oklawaha River, when we put Will's ashes out into the river. And now I think it's amazing that 26 years since that time, she's now singing his songs. I, I just think that's really special. And uh, I can't say enough about that. My daughter Ellie Townsend, now Ellie Floyd, she's out there. She was there too. And I'll never forget that day, Margaret. I think uh, Bobby Hicks was there and he was saying, uh, along with Don Grooms, they were telling Will to cross over, do not be afraid. And you could hear my, my two-year-old Ellie at the time, she's now 28, saying, cross over, do not be afraid. <laughs> It was really sweet. It was just the neatest thing. But since that time, we've gone to a lot of Sunday samplers that were in Donnell and that Mem Sims, our dear friend Mem Sims, and John put on every month. We love those. And, and Lee, who's now, he'll be 23 years old, I guess, this year. He was going to those starting at around three or four years old. And Margaret and John said, that boy needs a guitar. He needs to start playing. He, he likes music. He needs a guitar. And so with Margaret's encouragement and John, John, are you out there somewhere? We hope so. Um, here they are now, all these years later, and they're here to kind of represent all the young performers who've had a chance because of Margaret's enthusiasm for, for them to grow musically. And they're going to do... Uh, one of Will's really more, it's a love song really, isn't it, Margaret? McClinney, farewell. So let's let them take it away, Lee and Jesse and Dave, doing McClinney, farewell.
That was absolutely beautiful. Thank you. And thanks again for your inspiration of, for my children. And I know today you went to the summit for the young people, right? What did you tell them today? Right. Oh, I was just going to tell you that you ought to be proud of Jessie. Right. <laughs> She's so humble, isn't she? She's just so humble. Well, thank you again for that inspiration. Well, as humble as you are, I know there are many, many songs having worked with the song contest and very proud to have worked with the song contest for so many years that people have written songs about you. There have been a lot of people who have written songs about you, Margaret, and um, we're not going to be able to hear every single one of them tonight, but we are going to have a special song coming up here in just a second from one of our favorite singer-songwriters here who's written a beautiful song about you called Oh Margaret. And so Amy Carol Webb will be coming up here on stage. Hope she's close by. I know that she wrote this song especially for you for your 90th birthday party which turned out to be a party you planned it didn't you well it was a blast <laughs> we had it at the old train depot in Dunellen, and he had a huge song circle going let amy let her sing okay <laughs> a celebration of music, wasn't it? <laughs> Amy, quick, hurry! <laughs> She's coming. She's coming up. <laughs> Here she comes. Come on up, Amy. Amy Carol Webb. So for, it was a special song that she wanted to dedicate to, to Margaret for her uh, for her um, 90th birthday party, and uh, but we do want Margaret, when I told her that Amy was coming to sing her song, she wanted to make sure that we let everyone know that there have been several songs that have been written about her, and she wanted to thank all of those who have done that and to, to know how much she appreciates those songs that have been written about her. Yes, and we Margaret has a special little treat for you that will be coming up. Yeah, actually, I think, do we want to go ahead and do that first, or do we want to have, we want to have Amy probably? We want to have Margaret do her poem first? Okay, before Amy sings her song, we want to have you go ahead and do the special thing that you have planned with um, Wayne Martin coming up, I believe, on fiddle, and we're going to have you do My Soul is a Hawk, and then Amy is going to take us out. What microphone would you like Margaret to uh, to be on, Barry? Okay, hang on just a second. I never thought I'd be replacing Amy. <laughs> <laughs> Musicians are going to play along as we do My Soul is a Hog. Okay? of the sky soar I, the beauty of Florida below me. As 
thermal air currents send their song through my wing feathers, and I see I float in ever-widening circles, yellow eyes piercing in rapture. The blues, the gold, the faint pinks of sunset, and I see in the far, far distance the old dead tree on which I find my soul is a hawk. Two. 